Okay, hopefully you remember the scene. We've been working on it for a long time. We have some cube data. We render the cube twice. Each time we use a different model-to-world transformation matrix. For one of the renders, we combine this translate with this rotate using matrix multiplication. And that gives us this render on the left. And then we combine another translate with another rotate using matrix multiplication. That gives us this cube on the right. That's called instancing, and we've examined that in great detail. In order to get both both of the cubes to render, we have to also slam both of them with a projection matrix, which puts them into projected space. We've talked about that in previous videos. We've also talked about this perspective function and how we can give the field of view, the aspect ratio, the near plane, the far plane. We've seen how all of these affect the projection matrix. So just keep in mind that these these right here are the model to world transformation matrices for both of the cubes. They transform the cube into the world and then we take the world and we simply project it. If you can recall however with my tool back here there's this matrix I've been ignoring which is the world to view transformation matrix. It puts the world into the view and you may think Jamie in your code back here we didn't do such of a matrix we didn't uh, you've never used that matrix why not well I'll tell you why not it's because I've been cheating in all these videos I've had the world coordinate system lined up perfectly with the view coordinate system and right, let me actually get my red out here this is positive X positive Z in the world coordinate space and it just so happens to be positive x okay, positive x and positive z in the camera's coordinate space I have both coordinate systems perfectly lined up but as you saw in the last video I can certainly change my look at point and we see the red grid which is the world coordinate system rotate around the views coordinate system because I'm changing the look at point for my camera. And 99% of the time, that's what we do. We have to take the entire world and move it around the camera. We have to have a world to view transformation matrix. I've been ignoring it all the time because uh, it's, it's irrelevant for all the other discussions we've had up to this point. But I'm kind of tired of having our camera stuck to this view. I want to make a camera that can fly around. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I do have a camera that can fly around. So I want to show you how to build such a camera. It's actually pretty straightforward. And when I say camera, I'm saying I want an infinite infinitesimally, is that how you say that? Infinitesimally small point, I can move around and tell it to look at various locations. So we need to study this this world, world to view transformation matrix, so that we can apply it to all the models in our world. And that's that's where we're going with this video. Let me align both coordinate systems back up. And I'm going to make the cube show itself and the sphere show itself. You can see before I started the video or started recording this video I positioned the cube and the sphere to the left of the camera the camera is looking this direction it cannot see the sphere or the cube or at least I won't think it's let's click here and see what the camera sees oh we do see the sphere off to the left but we don't see the cube I want to see the cube and the sphere so I'm going to change my look at point this look at point I don't want to look at negative 1.5 in the world on the Z axis right now we're saying camera look at negative 1.5 of the z-axis. I want to look at negative 1.5 on the x-axis. We did this in previous video. Negative 1.5, take that to a zero, and voila, the world is sitting in front of the camera. Let me see if I can fly around here a little bit. Kind of get behind the camera. You can see the camera, depending on the field of view, the camera can see this much of the world now. And you can almost think of this matrix as the as another model matrix if, if it helps we we hit the sphere with this matrix and we hit the cube with this matrix we hit all of the geometries we render with this matrix after hitting them with their individual model to world transformation matrix and that's that's what rotates them around in fact I know I keep giving a plug for the game engine programming playlist but in that playlist I show you how to do rotations using matrices and there's a zero here 
there's a zero here, there's a one here, there's a negative one here, cosine of 90 degrees is zero, cosine of 90 degrees is zero, sine of 90 degrees is one, and this is negative sine of 90 degrees, so that's a negative one. Anyway, go watch those videos. If you want to understand what all these numbers are doing inside of our matrix, I'm going to come down here, and I actually want to see the world as the camera sees it. You can see my aspect ratio might be a little bit off, but you get the idea. The camera can see the cube on the left and the sphere on the right. Generally, when we make our own cameras to fly around, in fact, this is exactly what we're going to do when I show you how to teach, when I teach you to do a fly around camera, which is where I'm headed with this. When we make these cameras, we simply say, well, where is our camera and what direction we want to look at? And what direction do we want to look? Okay, but the actual function we use to build this matrix is slightly more complicated. We said, say, what is our eye position? in the world, what point in the world do we want to look at, and what is our up vector? Let me actually show you this in code. If I come in here and I'm going to say GLM, look at, and open it up, you see what's the eye position, what's the infinitesimally small point that the eye needs to be at? What do you want the eye to look at? This is the look at point. And then what do you want to be up? Do you, do you want your cameras up to be what we're used to every, every day, having our heads vertical, that sort of thing. Let's go back to the tool and actually examine this. And I'll fly back around over here. Right now, I said the look at point. What I want to look at is negative 1.5 on the x. So this is positive x of the world now, positive z of the world now. So negative 1.5 of the x would be right here. And generally, just, when we make our own camera, we'll say, put our camera here and have it look that direction. Or maybe we want to look at the back side of the sphere here. So put our camera here and look that direction. But that's not how this function works. This function's saying, hey, what point do you want to look at? And so I'll show you how to adapt to that. But right now we're looking at negative 1.5. Maybe I want my camera to be fixed to where this cube is. Right now the cube is sitting in world coordinates, negative 3.5. 2.5 so let's put our look at point a little bit further out nothing's changing in the view because we were looking at negative 1.5 now we're looking at negative 3.5 but then I want to look at the cube center here I want to fix my eye on the cube so in world coordinates the center of the cube is at 2.5 hey let's look at 2.5 and now the cube is sitting right in front of the camera. I can say, fix the eye position to the camera, and there's our cube. Maybe I want to look at the sphere. Well, the sphere, instead of sitting at the positive 2.5 on the Z, is sitting at negative 2.5 on the Z. So I can easily slide this around, and you see the en entire world moves around the camera. At this point of view, though, it looks like I'm turning the camera, turn the camera, turn the camera, turn the camera, turn the camera. But we know better. We know better. What we're doing instead is turning the world. Okay, turn the world, camera's looking at the cube, camera looks at the sphere, cube, sphere, cube, sphere. So hopefully you're getting the idea there. Now maybe I want to do a flight simulator, something a little more interesting. It's okay to have the camera stuck to the floor there, but I want a, I want a bird's eye view of what we see here. I want the camera way up here and looking down at the scene. The looking down part's not that hard because my eye, my look at point is fixed right at negative 1, 2, 3.5. My look at point's there, so no matter where I position my camera, here, it'll look there. Here, it'll look there. Over here, it'll look there because that's where my look at point is. But I want to make my camera go up. The look at function will take care of the look at direction for me, but I want my camera to go up. So I need to change my I position to something a little higher. So here we go in the Y, and you can see the camera. It's, the camera's not changing. Okay, the camera is fixed. Instead, what, what we have to do is move the world, and the world turns a little bit. You see, it goes further away from the camera. But if I come here and say, let me see what the camera sees, it's a bird's eye view. It's like we're up in the sky. Okay, let's bring it down. We're down low. We're up high. We're down low. We're really low. We're up high, and it feels like the camera's moving, but what is really going on here is the, the world is moving. So it's actually kind of fun to get the camera up here, a little bit higher, and then say, I want to look at the cube. I want to look at the sphere. I want to look at the cube. I want to look at the sphere. And that's just a matter of changing the, the Z point of what we're looking at. Look at the cube. Look at the sphere. Put the cube in front of the camera. Now put the sphere in front of the camera. Let's actually see how the camera sees it. Sphere, cube, sphere, cube. Hopefully you're getting the idea. So yeah, 
Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's the lookout point. That's the eye point. The up vector is actually kind of interesting. Let me let me bring our lookout point down, or my eye point. Sorry, my eye point down, and the lookout we'll put right here. The up vector. You can picture your camera as having an up vector. When we say up right here, we're essentially saying, okay, pretend like your camera has a vector coming out of the top of it. What do you want me to align that vector to? Right now we just said point that vector straight up in the Y direction. But I could certainly tweak this. Maybe we don't want to be vertical. Maybe we want to be horizontal like we're laying on a couch. Or maybe we got knocked over in, in our favorite first person shooter. We're dead on the ground so we need to see the world at a sideways view. So I can actually come in here and mess with that up vector. And say let's, let's push the up vector this direction. Or no, this direction. This direction, this direction, back and forth, and that's going to make the world go back and forth. In fact, let's see how the camera sees it. It's almost like we're on a boat, and the boat is rocking. But I'm just changing the up vector, and the matrix right here is aligning that vector that's coming straight out of the top of the camera with the up vector. Generally, we just point it straight up, but we can certainly do stuff like this. And I'm actually going to do a little video talking about the up vector in more detail in about three or four videos. But at first, we need to build a camera. And I want to build a camera. I want to show you how to build a camera so you can fly around your scenes like we I fly around my scenes and we're not stuck to this view right here. I mean, it's kind of cool we got this to work, but I actually want to make a camera that I can fly around the world like this. It's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is pick a point for our eye position and then we just need to change what the camera is looking at. And I'll, I'll show you how to build that over the course of the next few videos.